Hey guys, welcome to my first Sponge plugin tutorial. Uh, today we'll be going over just the basics on how to create a plugin using the new, or I guess a year and a half old Sponge API, which is now newly newly released into uh, beta around December 31st. Um, so more reason to uh, develop plugins for it since there isn't too many plugins out there and the tutorials out there, there's very little of them. So I feel like I should add some on YouTube. So let's get right into it. Um, so a great place to go is Sponge's website, which is spongepower.org. Um, there's the forums, it's in Discord, or not Discord, Dis course, Discourse, I think it's like that. I think it's the new uh, form software. Uh, it's nice. A lot of helpful stuff in there. Uh, plugin development and plugin categories where you will spend your life uh, here. Um, <clears throat> asking and they respond super quickly especially this guy simon uh anyways i, I digress uh but here's a good place to go and you're also going to go to docs the documentation and you'll be definitely reading this and it has helpful information on how to create your plugin you could basically learn everything you could learn in this video from here so it's a great place to go um so i recommend you go check it out um, so as it says, like right here, uh, choosing your ID, but we're going to leave this anyways. Um, choosing your ID, we are using IntelliJ. But you see, I also have Eclipse on here too. You can use other one. The settings are almost identical. There's just basically what you want and stuff like that. I'll show you the difference. Um, a lot of people tell, say, the look is the diff main difference, but... There's a little, a lot of hidden differences, but today we're going to be using IntelliJ. I don't know why I launched this. I'll just let it open so it doesn't give me an error. Oh, it's going to close anyways. Okay. So what you want to do is first download IntelliJ or download Eclipse. I'll put both links for both in the description. And then once you get that downloaded, install, go through a simple process. Simple, download, double click, install. Once you have that installed, you're probably going to create a shortcut on your desktop like I do here. Double click that and you'll get this screen. You want to click create new project. And there's a ton of options here. Um, you can either create a project, a Java project, Maven project, or Gradle project. And then Sponge was created off of Gradle. We're going to be using that too. So just compatibility issues. And here, if any of you have created uh, plugins with Maven or even Gradle before, you, you'll get used to this. Uh, group ID is going to be like your web address or URL to your like where you can store your repositories and stuff like that. It's usually like if you have a website, it's usually that URL backwards. I have a website, it's my name, and then after you type it backwards, it's the name of the project, and I'll do tutorial. And our artifact ID is basically the name of the project. <clears throat> and then version is any version you want. It can be snapshot release or something like that. And once you get here, these are a bunch of Gradle settings. Make sure you have your JVM set. Don't have it not defined. Next, project name, self-explanatory, where you want it saved. And then it creates all the acquired files for you. So this is like all the Java libraries that you need. Um, so once you have this, oopsie. Once you have this, you're just probably going to be like this. You want to click Project. And then you want to open up all the, the file tree. Don't open up that idea. It's just a required uh, IntelliJ folder. You want to go new and then directory. I think it's directory. Oh, yeah. Because modules, different submodules were. So you want source. You want to create the main source file. Then you want to create the main. Then here you want to create our Java and resources. Java. Uh, click on the main again. Don't click on Java resources. And you see these are different, so like they're meant to be in here. And we want to create a package out of our Java folder. And this will be the same as our, our group ID. And then we want to create our main class. This is going to be the start of our code. You, If you created like bucket plugins before, you're kind of used to this setup too. Um, so... Now we have our main class. The setup is a little bit different. 
So like in um, Bucket, we had extends Java plugin. And as you see, we type alt enter and there's no class. Well, that's for two reasons. One, Sponge doesn't have that. And two, we haven't even added Sponge to our dependencies. So we have to add that. We need to type maven name equals sponge and URL equals reap. Let's see if I can remember this. Repo dot repo dot sponge power. I probably don't. It's something like that. It's the reason docs are helpful. And then I also want to add uh, add it to the dependency list, not just the repository. Um, grab my link right here. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay, repo dot smart. Okay, HTTP, and then we want to do Maven. Get the Maven repo. That would make sense. And then we want to do compile. You, I'll put this code in the description. You guys shouldn't have to type this. Uh, org dot sponge sponge api and this would be the version 3.0 oh boy no i think it's the latest version let's see uh let's see what the latest release version is Yeah, I think so. Okay. And then we have this, and then you see, ignore this. Um, you were all set up here, and then to update it and actually put them, have, have the external libraries to show up here, we want to open the toolbar window. So your, <clears throat> your project workspace will show up like this. And you want to go into Gradle on the far right and refresh or synchronize right here. And it will run your build.gradle and download and compile the dependencies. And as you can see, it's indexing some of those repositories. And now you can see there's a whole ton more here. And as you can see, here's the Sponge API and all these other ones are dependencies of the Sponge API. So, but anyways, even still, this one does not work. So, and there's a reason for that. The new Java plugin is an annotation, and it's this. We want to import this, import class, press Alt Enter. That's how you, uh, you want to get on the, um, that's what you want to enter, and then you press Alt Enter. So we need to put three things, ID equals uh, tutorial. I think I like to say ID is like a computational safe name. Um, name is like a user friendly name. So tutorial and then version equals, I usually just do 1.0 or 0.1, let's do 0.1. Okay, so now as you see, we have a working plugin. Okay. Now this plugin won't do anything. It will run on setup. It'll show that it works, but we can't run this plugin without a server. So let's create the server. As you see, I have a basic server setup. We'll create another one though. Create a new folder in desktop. We call it tutorial server. And in it, you want to go to Sponge's website and download their Sponge Vanilla. I already have it downloaded, so I'll put it in here. You want to have that rename it to Sponge Vanilla. It'll have some name with some uh, release versions on it. Uh, probably Sponge Vanilla dash 1.9 beta or something like that. And so you want to put it inside your server folder. And you either want to like use Notepad or Notepad plus plus. Go into it and press Control N. And then you want to type Java dash capital X MX 1G or whatever amount of memory you want to allocate to it. And then you want to type XMS 1G. I'm doing one, one gigabyte of 
uh, memory. And then you want to do hyphen jar. This is the <clears throat> the command you're used to running if you're like running compiled jars. And then you want to write sponge vanilla dot jar. And let's press Control S, find our server tutorial server, and save it as run. But don't save it as a text file. Save it as a batch run dot bat. And you'll see it'll have some syntax highlighting there because it knows it's a batch file. And the first time you run it, it will not work because it will run the Minecraft server, which requires you to agree to the EULA. So we'll start that. It'll download that. And then it'll say, oops, you haven't agreed to the EULA. Stop the server. You can open the EULA, type true, and then restart again. Uh, everyone who does that, everyone who starts the server has to agree to the EULA. Just, oops, don't want to print that. <laughs> Want to go do edit and this type true, and now we can press run again, and it'll start the server completely and load all the worlds. While this is starting, let's actually make our plugin do something on the server startup. So, like there was in a bucket at listener, there's also a listener in here. But you can either do at listener or at subscribe. Doesn't matter. I think there's like different API changes. They're working on like choosing one. Uh, okay, public void on server start. Server, server start. Oh, it's game. Yeah. Game starting started. E. And as you can see, like there was in a bucket or server starting event, a lot of the server stuff is called game. And there's this, you might want to include this, uh, at inject game, game. You can either, you can either that inject it or make it, or set it static equal to uh, sponges.getGame. I like injecting and not setting it statically. Um, when the server starts, this is our event. And we can actually do this to make it log something. So at inject logger logger. And by injecting, we don't have to set that set it equal to something. So we can do logger dot log level dot um let's just do info. I don't even know what the I don't even know what the method stuff for log error is. <laughs> dot log yeah, string message to the level dot info. Um and we can do tutorial plugin has loaded. You know technically loaded a while ago, but yeah we can do that. And so Let's actually move that. So we're here, we can build it, but we can't build it yet. We need to go into project structure, artifacts plus jar empty. We can name this tutorial. Oops, let's go back to that. And we want to do to see this tutorial I'll, I'll compile output. We want to double click it, press comp apply, press OK. Actually, we want to go back to that again. We want to change the output of this and make it output to our server directly so we don't have to always move it to tutorial server. I went to mods. Oh, there we go. And that's after the worlds are created, stop this. Go back to that. And then we can build this. Build and then go down to build. And you can see it's making the project down here. And we can go into our thing. And this is all for Sponge Vanilla. Um, running it for Sponge Forge or Sponge whatever version you want, it's going to be exactly the same. It's just you're going to have to create your Forge server. And the reason that came up is because the logger. 
yeah, I show it says plugin is loaded, so that's why. Um, yeah, and so that's that's simple. So then we can do sponge, sponge plugins, and you see tutorial shows up. And we can stop the server. Uh, plugin shows up. So now we can actually remove this. We don't need that anymore. But we do. We can remove all these uh, unimportant events. Um, so, um, something else we can do is a uh, another listener public void on on init initialization game initialization event. So this is before the server starts. Uh, no, we actually don't need. We're gonna put logger back in here. Logger, logger. Let's bring that back in there. Logger dot. Level dot. Info. Tutorial has or plugin has loaded you know it's not loading we're just gonna say it loaded then uh, so let's build it again and this is just to show you you can say different things or do different things in different part of the startup process because you can only do certain things and access certain methods during certain parts of the startup process and I'll show you in the next video when we uh, start to create commands and work with arguments and stuff like that. But for now, as you see, it says tutorial plugin is loaded. Um, and really, it uh, after initialization uh, is when plugins get loaded. So if you really want to get that, then you have to do it after an initialization event, game initialization event. But that's for a later video. And stay tuned, guys. This was just a simple video, just how to set up your plugin in your workspace. Um, we have a simple one class plugin, doesn't create a fig, it just says uh, tutorial plugin is loaded in the initialization event. Um, stay tuned for the next video where we start to create commands and work with the command API and arguments. And thank you guys for watching, and see you guys in the next video.